dear students welcome to our online classes i am ravi kumar k r lecturer in computer science jsipu college mysore students in this session let us discuss <coughs> with the new chapter that is chapter 4 software concepts and the weightage of the chapter is 5 you will get one two mark questions and one three mark question weightage of this chapter is 5 in this chapter we are going to discuss different terminologies of software and we are going to learn different types of software functions of software and different types of user interface okay students if we talk about computer this computer has three components computer has three components they are one is hardware next one is software and third component is users and you know what is a hardware what is a hardware hardware is nothing but the physical component of a computer <coughs> which we can touch and feel so what is a software software is nothing but is a set of programs set of programs or computer programs or <coughs> software and what are users users are the one who uses <coughs> computer <coughs> one uses computer so now in this chapter we are going to learn in detail about software then if you talk about software what is a software just to have told you it is a set of computer program set of computer programs are called software so in turn what is a computer program as already you know that computer programs are nothing but a set of sequence instructions given to computer so here software is set of programs if we talk about software we have here we have different types of software here we have different types of software they are one is application software <coughs> application software second one is system software second one is system software so there are two types of softwares they are application software and system software so what are application software application softwares are the software which has been designed which has been designed or developed for for one particular application one particular <coughs> application or one particular task what is the meaning of that here these softwares are developed only for one particular work or one type of job here for example tally software it is your <coughs> tally application software and your ms office you take ms word or ms excel all these are application software here tally is a software it is used only for financial applications and similarly ms word you know how to use ms word and excel so ms word is a software it is a documentation software the ms excel what is ms excel software it is a spreadsheet software we are using in our for calculations yes. and you take another example like your billing software billing software and nowadays already i have told you in my previous session if you go to any provision store even today or any medical shop they will provide you a, a computerized bill so that is a another type of application software and very good example is your gaming software your gaming or game software all of you are familiar with or we allowed to play games in computers or through mobiles so those <coughs> game softwares are application software so what is application software is software which has been developed for one particular application or a task 
they are called as application software examples are tally ms word excel billing software or game software are examples for this application software now let us look into that system software so what is system software <coughs> these system software are the software which has been developed or designed for proper functioning of proper functioning of computer system for computer system <coughs> so what is a system software a system software is a software which has been designed or developed for the proper functioning of computer system and also it provide it provide an environment for an environment it provide an environment for other programs other programs to run or to work and this system software it is a machine language it is a machine language and it is going to address registers registers memory and other hardware parts of cp so what is the meaning of that <coughs> the system software generally it is in machine level language <coughs> language of zeros and one and system software is going to address about registers memory and other hardware parts of cpu the system software is a machine dependent it is a machine dependent and not portable and not portable provide an environment provide an environment for development of for development of other programs of other software so these are the points about system software so what is system software the system software generally it is a machine level language or it is going to address registers and memory and other hardware parts of cpu and this machine level language we are using it for the proper functioning of computer system or in other words it is going to coordinate between hardware and software of computer system and also is the important uh, application is that it provide environment for other programs to run so suppose if there are it's going to run different types of program and also it provide environment for development of other software the system software helps us to develop different software depends on the application so this is about system software now we look into that types of system software now types of types of system software system software there are three types of system software they are operating system we represent like os second type is language translator language translator next one is utility software utility software so there are three types of system software they are operating system or we say os and language translator and utility software now let us look into this one by one here this operating system is an interface between between the user and the computer if i say computer the meaning is as resources of computers 
resources of computer system or cpu they are maybe your io devices input output devices memory devices etc so what is an operating system operating system is an interface between the user and the computer so what is the meaning of interface it is going to link it is going to connect the user and the computer so here user are the one who uses the computer isn't it so what is a computer it is a hardware so if i want to work with the computer or if i want to communicate with the computer so there should be an interface between the user and the computer that is a hardware so operating system it is an interface between the user and the computer system or computer resources actually this operating system it is the base it is the base of the computer system it is the base of the computer system what is the meaning of base of the computer system when you boot the computer operating system it is the first software is loaded in the computer after the loading of operating system then user can work with the computer system see suppose if i want to work with ms word op application so after boot in the computer once the once operating system is loaded then we go to the start menu then programs we are going to select ms word or ms office application so here suppose here before we loading or before we work with ms word a software will be loaded that is your operating system so it is a base it is that is why it is called as base of your computer system suppose if you cannot find this software suppose if this is not available in your computer you cannot work with the ms word see normally we represent this operating system like this first we have hardware part here if you talk about hardware part here we have cpu and memory and over this we have system software there are operating system language translator and utility software utility software this is your second layer and over this we have one more layer that is your application software that is your application software like tally is a software ms word is application software or any other billing software billing software or your application software now we can understand where the operating system is here first we talk about this hardware cpu or memory is the physical part of your computer or hardware on top of it or over it we are loading with system software so this is an interface now this is an application software here so the user or the programmer work at this level and so it is an interface between application as well as system software and again with the hardware with the computer system so this is how we represent the types of software so first is the physical part is the hardware over it there is a system software example operating system and language translator and utility software and over this is there is an application software example tally and ms word so what is it? that is why the meaning of base is this so here on top of operating system we are loading or we are installing different types of application software now we move on to next type of system software that is language translator before discussing about language translator let us learn about a computer language about computer language so you know what is a language so what is a language in general it is a medium of communication suppose 
if i want to communicate with you students and both of us should be on the same platform so what is the meaning of same platform see both of us should know same language for example now i am talking in english so if you want to understand this you must be knowing english language suppose if you speak in english suppose if you don't know english language if you know some other language then it then whatever i am going to say you are not able to understand so this is not an effective communication so if if you want to have an effective communication so both of us should be on the same platform similarly suppose so here what is a computer now now we have learned what is a computer and what is a software and what operating system operating system is nothing but an interface between the user and the computer so here computer is a machine it cannot think on its own it depends on instructions so we have to instruct the computer or we have to write a program in such a way that or in such a language which computer can understand so here what is a computer language computer language is nothing but a program a programming language it is a programming language programming language with syntax or rules where user must user must follow these syntax these syntax to instruct to instruct computer to instruct computer because all of you know computer it depends on the computer programmer or computer program what is a computer language a computer language is a language of it consists of syntax and rules generally if you take any language so you take english language it has its own syntax or rules or grammar you take kannada language it has its own syntax or grammar similarly this computer language it is a medium of communication between the computer and the user so here it has its own syntax and rules and user must follow the syntax to instruct the computer types of computer language we have types of computer language they are one is low level language low level language and second one is high level language high level language again this low level language divided into two types one is machine level language machine level language and assembly level language and assembly level language and again under high level high level language again there are two types they are general purpose general purpose high level language and specific purpose specific purpose high level language so here students there are types of computer languages they are low level languages and high level language under high low level language we have two two types machine level language we represent as mll and one more type is assembly level language that is all and under high level language there are two types general purpose high level language and specific purpose high level language now let us look into this one by one first type is machine level language machine level language this machine level language is a system language we say it is a system language and it is a language of language of machine instructions 
machine instructions so what is the meaning of machine instructions these languages consists of zeros and one are called binary numbers are called binary numbers and everything is in the form of numbers the two binary numbers what is the binary numbers it consists of only two digits zero and one so all your program instructions must be a combination of these zeros and one and students this this language is consists of only these numbers and it is very difficult for us to remember numbers for example how many mobile numbers you can remember isn't it so it depends on your capacity you may remember around 10 mobile numbers or 50 numbers how long you can remember these numbers similarly because it is a language of machine instructions these in in the these instructions in the form of zeros and one or combinations of zeros and one so because everything is in the form of numbers here this is very difficult or very difficult to learn a language very difficult to learn a language and very difficult to understand not only that again it is difficult language to remember remember codes or instructions for large number of commands moreover the program will be very lengthy in terms of size and again difficult in difficult in debugging what is debugging here the correcting the mistakes in a program correcting the errors in a programs is called debug so debugging debugging process in this machine level language is difficult process it is not so easy then another drawback of this it is machine dependent it is machine dependent so what do you mean of machine dependent here students the meaning of machine dependent is that suppose if you write a program for one computer so that program will work or run only in that computer suppose if you take the same program to some other computer and it will not run so that is the meaning of machine dependent mean each and every system or computer must have its own machine level language or program written in machine level language it is that is the i mean it is not portable that is the meaning of machine dependent and here this is the language of zeros and one or binary numbers commands can be directly typed directly typed and executed executed because computers knows only one language that is machine level language that is the language zero and one so if you write a program with binary numbers or a machine level language directly you can type the commands and it executes immediately so this is about machine level language now let us look into assembly level language assembly level language it is it, it is a symbolic language it is a symbolic language the meaning of symbolic language is that it consists of some mnemonics we say mnemonics mnemonics is nothing but the meaning of mnemonic is the code so here this language assembly language is consists of mnemonics or codes or a type of symbols and rather than numbers so because of this codes programmer they found it it is easy as compared to machine level languages and easy to modify easy to program it has codes for example add for addition sub for subtraction mul for multiplication hlt for halt sta for storing so it 
this language consists of mnemonics or codes like add, subtract, multiplication, halt and STA in the place of numbers. And if you compare this with the previous language, that is machine level language, so it is easy to remember some codes rather than remembering some numbers. Easy for debugging. Easy for debugging and it reduce the size of the program. Reduce the size of the program. So this is about assembly level language. Next we move on to another type of language that is high level language. High level language. Or HLL, high level language or HLL. HLL. So high level language, it is an English like language. English like language. It is not an English language, students. This language consists of alphabets A to Z, small letter A to Z, and using some numbers, digits, and some special characters. So, on. so this high level language, it is English like language and it consists of alphabets, English alphabets, A to Z, uppercase and lowercase and some digits or numbers and characters. Characters you say full stop, comma, semicolon, bracket, all these are special characters. So, easy to learn, easy to learn and even to understand because English education is starting from LKG onwards or from pre-KG onwards. Nowadays, we are finding it, we are finding English language easy to learn, easy to understand. Because of this, it is also easy to learn high level language and easy to understand. And high level language, easy to program, easy to program, easy to modify and even debugging is much more easier as compared to previous languages assembly language and machine level languages and another important point is that high level language is a machine independent it is a machine independent machine independent so what is the meaning of that if you write one program for one computer, so same program can be used or can be run on another computers or different computers. So that is the meaning of machine dependent. So the programs written in high level language, it, is, it can be executed on different computer. So it is, that is why it is called as portable. It is portable. Here example for high level language, we know that basic COBOL, FORTRON and nowadays you know what is C, C++, Java, all these are examples for high level language. The drawback is that it is less flexible, it is less flexible, it takes it takes more memory it takes more memory so this is about high level language so high level language is english like language it consists of alphabets from a to z uppercase lowercase and numbers or characters and because it is e english like language as we are familiar with english language as and today so easy for us our programmer to learn understand and even programming is easy even modification as well as debugging also easier. And the advantage of this language is, is a machine independent. Means the program written in high level language can be run or execute on different computers. And it is portable. And basic, COBOL, all these are examples for high level language. And drawback is that it is less flexible as well as it takes more memory. Students. Hope you have understood the concept here. So, in this session, I have explained you about the types of software and definition of software, application software and system software. And under system software, 
we have three types of software and the three types they are operating system language translator and utility software and I had explained to you about operating system it is an interface between the user and the computer i will meet you in my next session thank you very much